We have already started default constructor and parameterized constructor in our previous lectures. Now we are in this lecture and the name of this lecture is copy constructor which is the third type of constructor we will study. So without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. The first topic is copy constructor. First, we will understand what is copy constructor and how we can create our own copy constructor. Then we will move to the second topic where we will understand implicit copy constructor. So these are the topics. Let's start with the first one, copy constructor. So what is copy constructor? Copy constructor is the constructor that is used to create a new object as the copy of an existing object. As the name itself suggests, with the help of copy constructor, we can create a new object and we can provide the copy of an existing object to that new object. This is possible with the help of copy constructor. And this means the new object can be initialized by an existing object. And this can be done by passing the reference to the existing object as argument. This is what I have written here. It takes reference to an object of the same class as argument. Through that reference, we can initialize our new object by an existing object. In this way, we provide the copy of an existing object to the new object and that is why this constructor is called the copy constructor. Now to make this more clear and to understand how we can create our own copy constructor, let's see one example program. Here we have the class student with private members, role number and name. Apart from this, we also have these public member functions. We have this parameterized constructor with two parameters R and N. And through these parameters, we can provide values to role number and name of a specific object. Here we have this copy constructor. This is the copy constructor. Here you can observe that we have the reference to some object of class student. And this is the constant because it will not change. This is the convention we can follow. Here we have these two statements. Roll number equals s dot roll number and name equals s dot name. You will get to know about what these lines mean. Then we have this display function that allows us to display roll number and name on the screen. So this is the class student. And here we have the main function. Inside the main function, I have defined the object s1 of class student. Not only this, I have initialized this object with values 112 and John. Clearly, the parameterized constructor will be called and these parameters will receive these values. This means, roll number associated to object S1 will receive value 112 and name associated to object S1 will receive the string John. This is what we have already learned in our previous lectures. Here, through the S1 object, I am calling the display function. We know we will get the output as roll number 112 and name John. I hope this is clear. After this, we have this statement student S2 equals S1. This is something we haven't seen before. Here we have the object S2 of class student. This means I have created the object S2, which is the new object. And to this new object, I am providing the copy of the existing object, which is S1. And this is done via the copy initialization. This is what you can see. Here I'm using the assignment operator. This means the copy constructor will be called and this will be considered as the reference to object S1. So we can say that S dot roll number is same as S1 dot roll number and S dot name is same as S1 dot name. 
Now what about these variables roll number and name? This constructor is invoked by this new object S2 because we have created this object. Therefore, these variables are associated to object S2. So we can say that this statement is same as S2 dot roll number equals S1 dot roll number. Therefore, S1 dot roll number, which is 112, is assigned to S2 dot roll number. In the same way, this statement is same as S2 dot name equals S1 dot name, and therefore S2 dot name will receive the string John. I hope this is clear to you. So, in this way, we can use the copy constructor to initialize a new object by the copy of an existing object. Now here, I'm calling the display function through the S2 object. This means roll number 112 and name John will be displayed. And this is what we will get as the output. We are getting roll number 112 and name John twice. I hope this is completely clear to you. So in this way, the copy constructor works. Now I would like to mention that this is not the only way of initializing this new object. We can also use direct initialization. This is the copy initialization. We can use direct initialization like this. Here also we will get the same output. So with this we have understood copy constructor properly. This means we are done with the first topic. Now let's move to the second topic to understand implicit copy constructor. Now what is implicit copy constructor? When no copy constructor is provided, compiler creates a public implicit copy constructor. When we do not provide the copy constructor on our own, then compiler will create the copy constructor on our behalf. And we call this implicit copy constructor because it is created by the compiler. It is not created by us. And it is the public implicit copy constructor because it is publicly available to all the objects of the class where the constructor will be defined by the compiler. I hope this is clear to you. And by default, implicit copy constructor will do member-wise initialization. This means, implicit copy constructor will work exactly the same as the copy constructor that we have defined in the previous example. Now, to understand how implicit copy constructor works, let's take the same example, but in the example, we will remove the copy constructor that we have created. This is the example program we have now. Here we do not have our own copy constructor, but we have this line, student S2 equals S1. Because of this line, the copy constructor must be invoked. But as we do not have our own copy constructor, compiler will provide its own copy constructor, which is the public implicit copy constructor and it will do the member-wise initialization. This means S2 dot roll number will be same as 112 because S2 dot roll number will be equal to S1 dot roll number and in the same way S2 dot name will be equal to S1 dot name and therefore S2 dot name will receive the string John. So when we execute this program, we will get the exact same output, that is roll number 112 and name John twice. So with this, we have understood the working of implicit copy constructor. Now you might be thinking, if we have the concept of implicit copy constructor, then why do we need to create our own copy constructor to do the same job? This is something we will understand later why we need our own copy constructor when we will understand the concept of shallow copy and deep copy. We have the dedicated lecture for the same. There you will get to know when do we need to create our own copy constructor. 
For now, just understand that implicit copy constructor is what we need most of the times. We do not have to create our own copy constructor many a times, but sometimes we may need to create our own copy constructor as well. This is what we will understand later. So with this, we have understood this topic as well, that is implicit copy constructor. And this means we are done with all the topics of this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.